13 children were being held captive inside their home in Paris, California. I could get the frequency from space with this thing. <laughs> he was upset and insulted and offended. Why in the world would you put forth a letter that you know would piss him off? Randy! Uh, how are you? How are you? I'm doing well. Of course, our, our favorite Cy Young Award winner, Randy Jones. I have to ask you, what, yeah. I mean, what's going to happen with you? <laughs> well, what do I'm you gonna, think? I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old now, I, unfortunately. I, was gonna say, are you, I mean, I wasn't going to say it to you, Reggie, but the man accused of shooting an off-duty sheriff's deputy about a month ago is under arrest. Good morning, Carlos and Liz. Good morning, San Diego. Good to see you. Happy opening day. From the beginning, they knew there were flaws in the plan. They knew it wasn't a perfect plan. They knew it wasn't the right plan. The only they were it pushing flawed. it because they wanted to stay here, I'll which is you. fair. A man is suspected of killing his girlfriend more than 20 years ago, and he has been arrested. Hey, here's your weekend. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a Paul Jr. commercial right now. <laughs> I heard from FEMA this morning during the press conference that kind of the peak of the flooding is going to happen again. Documentation of the first baptisms here, which basically also gives us a history of the first San Diegans. I am in my favorite place in Del Mar, double top secret place. This is where they keep all the money. I am here for the stick horse race with the cutest kids in Lakeside. Say good morning, San Diego. It's so hey, real. Hey, News, so real, it, it hurts. hurts. <laughs> this is Good Morning San Diego. Good morning, San Diego. Good to see you on this Tuesday. I'm Lisa Remillard. And I'm Carlos Amesco. It's nice to have you with us. All right, uh, let's... A Riverside couple is behind bars this morning after police say they made a very disturbing discovery. The couple's 13 children were being held captive inside their home in Paris, California. David Turpin and his wife, Louise Anna, are facing several torture and in child endangerment charges after police say they found their kids shackled to beds with chains and padlocks. The kids ranged in age from 2 to 29. Neighbors can't believe what was happening next door. They were much younger than what they were. This morning, all of the children are recovering in local hospitals. Some have already been interviewed by law enforcement. Their parents are waiting on a judge and should appear on Thursday. Organizers of the initiative Yes for a Better San Diego are expected to offer a more in-depth look at their proposal later today. The initiative seeks to expand the downtown convention center and create a dedicated funding source for homelessness services and infrastructure needs by raising the tourism occupancy tax. Proponents say if passed, the measure would pump more than $40 billion into our local economy and create thousands of new jobs over the next few years. The presentation will get started about 10.30 this morning at the San Diego Regional Chamber of Commerce. Well, a high surf advisory remains in effect for local beaches this week. All right, so that means be careful of the little kids in the water. Be careful if you are not an experienced surfer. Elizabeth Alvarez is live for us in Ocean Beach with the very latest. Hi, Liz. Morning, Liz. Global no, rally. Here we, go again. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah. I, I want to, before it we is. get to that, I want to talk a little bit about our local company, Qualcomm, and this so called yes. hostile takeover by Broadcom. And I guess Qualcomm this morning is encouraging its shareholders mm -hmm. and investors to push back on this. That's right. Are they all right? right. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. We'll watch right. that rally okay. and we'll check back with you when the market opens in our next hour. We'll and talk see to you where then. we are. Okay. Thank you. We'll take yep. a bit of Bye. Mariah Brew. Don't mess with Mimi. <laughs> All her people, whatever her. she does, they, they do. do. All right. A battle is brewing not over fixing streets, but fixing sidewalks. Turco says one city isn't willing to pay up the money, telling homeowners sidewalks are their responsibility. We have the Turco files ahead. 88 women will share their stories of abuse inflicted by a former Team USA gymnastics doctor during a sentencing hearing today. Larry Nasser is being sentenced on seven sexual assault charges. He could face life in prison. The hearing is expected to last until Friday. All right, thank you, Francella. Hey, listen, we want to just share with you a milestone on the Dow. It did hit 26,000 at the open this morning. This comes just 12 days after it hit 25. Thousand uh, investors are there is the number right there twenty six thousand thirty. It's a global rally according How about to Jane. Uh, Jane was, was talking about this earlier that it's been hovering at twenty five eight and, and change. All, All right, right. Um, we'll talk with Jane a little bit more about that coming up in our seven o'clock hour. Nearly a dozen people have been issued citations for breaking El Cajon's food sharing ordinance in one public park. I'll tell you why the protesters of the ban say they are not backing down. Thank you.
All right, I have been excited about this uh, for the last couple of weeks, and uh, this is the book right here. Uh, it's an inspiring story uh, from a young man from right here in San Diego who lived on our streets. He was homeless most of his life um, and found a way to pull himself out of that and make something of himself. Michael Galton is here to talk about uh, My Way Home. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I am so happy to meet you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Well, tell me, okay, so first and foremost, the book, I, I have been reading it. I just got my hands on it this morning. It is making me cry. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, tell me and tell everybody at home about your story. Well, in a nutshell, I was homeless from around ages 7 to 7. That's what we're talking about. 7 years old to 17. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what do you do as a 7-year-old, 8-year-old, 9-year-old when you're living in a car or living on a park bench? You How cry. do you do that? You cry and you scream, and they cry and they scream. What else can you do? And they're and they're in it right now too. Right now. And and you know we see homelessness here in San Diego. It's a huge issue huge. right now. And you lived it your whole life. Yes, ma'am. How is it that you were able to? We're going to talk about your accomplishments in a minute. But how were? <laughs> how is it? Given what you were dealing with, park benches, living in cars, living on the street. Mm -hmm drugs around you, Everywhere. Uh, arrests happening around you. How is it that you were able to pull yourself out? It was hard everywhere, um, and I've lost friends. So. Uh, yeah, you have. I mean, I was reading the book, and you go into every, almost every one of those episodes when, mm -hmm. you know, people around you are selling drugs and yes. getting caught by the cops, and yeah. you got caught up in it. Got, <laughs> I mean, not because you were selling drugs, but right. just because you were with them. You were, there, you yeah. were just there. Um, I want to talk to you about the mentality that you have. Mm -hmm. um, where does that come from? The mentality to do something greater with your life. Well, when you... So that's the from, only way to make it better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so against all the odds that we've just laid out for everyone at home, against <laughs> all of those odds, against all of that... Uh, I mean, as a Trojan, yikes. But, <laughs> but congratulate. I mean, unbelievable. You got a full-ride scholarship to UCLA. Mm -hmm. You found a way to get out of the system and into higher education yeah, and yes. you bettered yourself through that. <laughs> what was that what was that moment like for you when UCLA said full ride? Well, I didn't even want to apply to UCLA in the form of a homeless kid. You know? Well, <laughs> Michael, you are an inspiration. They, and you know, also we want to give a shout out to Reality Changers, which really does great work in this community yes. and takes kids that are really in a tough place and gives them the hope and the, <laughs> and, the and, and the confidence that they need to to do better in life. So the book On My Way Home Home, is yeah. out. It's out, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> How wonderful. For some reason, they let me in to the dugout. This is where the guys hang out. This is where they sit during the game. Home plate. Mike Salcedo showing you home plate right there. They walk up. They hang out. They see all the crowd. <sighs> Everybody's there. See, if I was a baseball player, I'd always just stand up and just, you know, tip the hat. That's what I would do. But look, watch, come on, Mike, follow me. Because here's what we're gonna do. Watch how easy it is for them to get from the dugout into their uh, their locker room. Shanna, it's called what? Clubhouse. The clubhouse. Come on. They don't like to say locker room. It's a clubhouse. Come on. So it's just a couple of steps, couple steps down, couple steps this way, up the stairs. You okay, Mike? Everybody good? All right. And then, look at how beautiful the Padres Clubhouse is. Oh, good morning. How about this one? The $83 million kid. This is where Will Myers sits, guys. Here's what I love the best about Will Myers' locker. Will, if you're watching, shout out, buddy. He got some hot sauce in it. Yeah, I love this guy. Clearly, a man after my own heart. I love it. So anyway, it's gonna be a great day here. Right, isn't that funny? There. What in the world is oh Tapatio doing in his locker? There's, there's a story behind that. <laughs> it's the best. Next time we see him, we are gonna ask him about it because it's awesome. What's this with, is so, so ball, anyway. He's got a ball of yarn and a tapatio. Lisa, I cannot <laughs> believe, look at this, this is great. The access that you are getting into their, practically what's like their work closet. Only Remillard gets this kind of access. The executive director of Sandeg, 
resigned. So joining us now to tell us more about this investigation into Measure A and Gary Gallegos' retirement announcement, County Supervisor and Sandag Board Chair Ron Roberts. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. Ron, there are so many errors in this, and there are so many things that are of concern. Um, can Sandag reform itself? Well, I, I, I think I should. But you can't deny the fact that this independent investigation well, found real prog problems with the culture among the staff well, at Sandag. Uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that kind of situation being taken. But Ron, when you hear that a um, secret file was created, all these documents were housed on a server that was not searchable by public records request. You know, this just sounds really shady. It does. It right. sounds. It sounds. Mm -hmm. So, how do you think that the public can trust what comes out of Sandag if all of our elected leaders, to the level of mayors of each of these counties, yeah. and you, a county supervisor, go on TV and tout these numbers and tout these Sandag things and push for something? How are the viewers and the people of San Diego and the surrounding county? going to trust what comes out of Sandak. Well, I, I think... Um, are you thinking that there needs to be some sort of staff shakeup at Sandak? Well, I, I, How can he be, Gallegos, be the best and also have staff doing things like this at the same time? That seems just counterproductive. Yeah, well, he's running a very big issue. All right. Well, we will continue to follow it along with you, Ron. I appreciate you coming in this morning. I know this is not easy, but I no, appreciate it's... you coming in. And to, I think I think it's important for the people here to to feel more confident in this organization. The first ever Breeders' Cup in Del Mar, and Lisa is there with a beautiful hat, her sparkly coat, mm -hmm. and a perfect morning. Absolutely gorgeous there. It, hi, Lisa. It it is. Hi, good morning, you guys. It is a perfect morning. I mean, it's a little chilly. I'm not going to lie, but it is beautiful. Beautiful. The sun is coming up. It is so pretty here at Del Mar. Everything is purple. There is purple everywhere. There's purple lighting, purple carpet. Instead of a red carpet, it's purple carpet. The celebrities are coming today uh, and tomorrow, of course. So much happening here at Del Mar. This is really something special for our town. This really puts a spotlight on Del Mar, on our track that we know and love that's been here in San Diego, you know, of course, forever. How about this? Richie Sambora today and tomorrow, Jewel, are going to be performing uh, Where the Turf Meets the Surf, right here in the Winter Circle, ahead of the races. But there's no bigger celebrity than Lisa Remillard, who is no. there uh, trackside. <laughs> Uh, this morning, of course, this wow. is a big, is a big fancy day. But isn't this interesting? You know, when Craig looking at Mission de Acala is like looking back in time, back to 1776, when Father Junipero Serra walked these grounds in San Diego. A man who, almost 250 years later, will become a saint. It is news; no one had expected it. I think the canonization process had been going on for 80 years and uh, as Pope Francis is often able to do, completely surprises the world. In the mid-1700s, Father Sarah was ordered by the Spanish king to claim what would later be known as California before the Russians or the English. He was to turn the Native Americans who were already here into Spanish citizens and Christians. At the age of 56, with a bad leg, Father Sarah walked from Mexico north as far as San Francisco Bay, establishing nine missions along the way. His first was right here in San Diego. This corner is the original corner because the mission expanded further, you know, in length and, and width. the original Adobe church was about a size that barely fit 10 to 12 kids. So it must not have been very big. Today, that mission is thriving. Monsignor Richard Duncanson is the pastor responsible for carrying on Father Sarah's work to minister to the monarch congregation of thousands, but also with the help of special archivists and volunteers to preserve Father Sarah's artifacts and relics that remain history that most never get to see. Like this bone fragment belonging to the soon-to-be saint, a relic kept in a hidden place. And this. Well, we have the uh, sacramental books. Tucked away in a fireproof filing cabinet, docent Tony Falcone reveals handwritten books by the man known as the Evangelizer of the West. This is documentation of the first baptisms here, which basically also gives us a history of the first San Diegans 
That is correct. You have a chronological history of the conversions and the evangelization of the Padres in San Diego area. They're written in a mixture of Spanish, Latin, Catalan, and Castilian. You can even see this entry, signed by Father Sarah on September 23, 1776, with his special fingerprint, also known as the rubrica. Thousands of names and descriptions of California Native Americans follow, one by one documenting their conversions by Father Sarah and his Franciscan Padres. Primary source documents, and even on the very practical level, uh, many during recent years have come to prove the fact that they're descendants of Native Americans. But some of those descendants take serious issue with the Pope's decision to elevate Father Sarah to sainthood. Many squarely blame him for killing off their population by bringing European diseases to the tribes, for what some describe as abuse and for wiping out their culture and way of life. I spoke candidly with the Monsignor about the concerns of the Native Americans. What would you say to them? I, I completely understand. It, like I said before, if I were Native American, if I were not Christian and Catholic, I think I'd have a very difficult time understanding how Father Sarah is such a wonderful role model. For those of us who have the gift of Christian faith, of us practicing the Catholic faith, Father Sarah is a great role model in terms of witnessing to his faith and sharing his faith. But for others who don't have that gift of faith, uh, the, the arrival of the Spanish missionaries uh, brought about this decimation of their population, and, and I understand why uh, that would be a great source of sorrow. But he says just because the church deems someone saintly doesn't also mean that person is perfect. When somebody's declared, you know, a member of the Hall of Fame in any sport, it's not to say they didn't make any mistakes playing the game, but they played the game better than others. From his humble home in Mallorca, Spain, Father Serra rose through the ranks of the Catholic Church, becoming a great scholar, a great explorer and evangelizer, a man who stands as a founding father of California in this rotunda in our nation's capital, next to President Ronald Reagan. Though he stands tall on Capitol Hill, the truth is Father Serra was a small man, only five foot two and 110 pounds. By all accounts, he preferred his beloved missions to any political power. His life-size statue remains in the garden at Mission de Alcala with his famous motto inscribed at the bottom, Siempre Adelante, Nunca Atrás, Always Forward, Never Back. Lisa Remillard, KUSI News.